Deontay Wilder now says that if he can't get a Tyson Fury trilogy fight next, he's open to fights with Andy Ruiz, Joseph Parker, Alexander Usyk, and even, wait for it, Dylan White. <laughs> now, where do I even start with this? Deontay Wilder refused to fight Dylan White for how many years? Three or four years Dylan White was chasing that fight. Even before he was mandatory challenger, he made several offers to Deontay Wilder. He even offered to come to the United States. And at the time they were offering Deontay Wilder career high money to fight Dylan White. But Wilder just came up with excuse after excuse after excuse for why he shouldn't have to fight the body snatcher. Then he loses to Tyson Fury. He comes to terms with the fact that his you know, days as one of the top earners in the heavyweight division could be coming to an end. He no longer has a WBC strap, so now all of a sudden he's open to these fights, which we were calling for when he was WBC champion. Ain't that funny? And of course, he's now seen Dylan White get knocked out. So now he wants to get brave and say, oh yeah, I'll fight Dylan White now. Why didn't you want to fight him before you saw him get knocked out? Why didn't you want to fight him when you were still WBC champion? Why didn't you want to fight all these guys when you, you were still WBC champion? Why weren't Wilder's fans saying that he should fight the likes of Dylan White? He should fight the likes of Andy Ruiz and Joseph Parker and Alexander Usyk. They were, they were coming up with all the excuses under the sun why he shouldn't fight those guys. See, these people are not real boxing fans. And Deontay Wilder, I hate to say it, he wasn't a champion with integrity. He wasn't. Because why would you make up you know, all types of reasons why you shouldn't fight these guys when you're champion than when you lose your championship and you can see your big paydays fading away into the distance, now all of a sudden you want to fight these guys. Nah. The measure of a, a real champion, a true champion, is when you're willing to fight these kind of guys when you still have the belt. Not after you've lost it. Not after you see one guy who's been calling you out for four years or whatever it is get knocked out and then you want to jump on him and fight him? Come on. Anyway, as, <laughs> as ridiculous as it is, Deontay Wilder's behavior, here, and, and as predictable as it is, we know what he's like by now. We know the character of the man by now. With all that being said, I'd still like to see these fights. Now, I've always said that I think Deontay Wilder would knock Dylan White out. And obviously, I feel even more strongly about that now that Dylan White got knocked out by Povetkin. Because I don't think Dylan White's punch resistance is going to be as good now. I think Dylan White's punch resistance is going to be further diminished by that Povetkin knockout defeat. Now, the other fights that Deontay Wilder talked about, Andy Ruiz, Joseph Parker, Alexander Usyk, great fights. And I think he stands a much greater chance of losing those fights than he would losing to Dylan White, especially at this stage. I think that Alexander Usyk would be an absolute nightmare for Deontay Wilder. Alexander Usyk's movement would totally throw Deontay Wilder's balance off. I think he'd really struggle to land his big shots. And we know Deontay Wilder's had all kinds of injuries right now and he's 35 years of age. Alexander Usyk is a bit younger. I think Usyk's technical ability and his speed, his balance would make Deontay Wilder look more sloppy and more ungainly than he's ever looked in any other fight. And, you know, at least since becoming WBC champion. The Andy Ruiz fight is really intriguing. I think Deontay can win that fight, but it's dangerous for him. The thing about Andy Ruiz is he stands very straight up. He's not the most difficult guy to hit with a right hand. The danger with fighting Ruiz, as Anthony Joshua found out, is although you can hit him because he stands straight up, his upper body movement is not very good, he counters very quickly. So if you're throwing a big shot at him, you better make sure that it lands and it does some damage to prevent him from punching back. And Andy Ruiz has got a very good chin, as we all know. Uh, so that's an intriguing fight. I think Wilder's got a better chance against Ruiz than he has against Usek. As far as Joseph Parker, Parker has the boxing ability 
to beat Deontay Wilder, but many of Wilder's other opponents did. He's also got the athleticism, if he uses it correctly, to get out of the way and prevent Wilder from setting up his right hand. But the issue with Joseph Parker is whether he's going to get it right tactically and whether he has the right type of mentality to beat somebody like Deontay Wilder because Joseph Parker isn't as tenacious as some of the other fighters out there. Like Andy Ruiz and Dylan White are much more tenacious than Joseph Parker. And I know, you know, Alexander Usyk doesn't appear to be like, you know, he doesn't appear to have the kind of mentality of Ruiz or Dylan White, but he's shown plenty of grit in other fights. Joseph Parker, there's a question mark as far as I'm concerned over his mentality. I'm not saying he lacks heart or anything like that, but I think he does lack meanness. And to beat somebody like Deontay Wilder, if you're not as skilled as Usek and as talented as him, you're going to need a certain level of meanness in you to be able to beat the guy. Because Deontay Wilder's mean, very mean, <laughs> you know, as we all know. And you need to be able to not get overawed by that meanness, not be intimidated by that meanness and strike back with your own meanness to keep him controlled, to keep him contained, like Tyson Fury did in their rematch. Tyson Fury put it right on him. Because Tyson Fury's mean too. <laughs> so, yeah, that one right there, Joseph Parker, hmm, I'm not so sure about. I give Andy Ruiz and Usyk the best chance of beating Wilder out of those four guys mentioned. Uh, but anyway, all of them are good fights. I'd like to see all of them. And if Deontay Wilder doesn't, get that Tyson Fury trilogy fight, hopefully, <laughs> and I say really hopefully, he sticks to his word and fights one of these guys. Now, as far as Dylan White, Dylan White is chasing that WBC world heavyweight title shot. If he manages to get past Povetkin, he's surely not going to double back and take on Deontay Wilder, especially after getting knocked out by Povetkin. He's surely just going to wait for Tyson Fury or whoever has the WBC strap at the back end of 2021, early 2022. Uh, so I think that's probably unlikely at the moment, unless Dylan White loses to Povetkin, and then maybe he says, whatever, I'll fight anybody, I'll fight Wilder. Uh, I have to imagine that the other fights would be more likely. So uh, Deontay Wilder versus Joseph Parker, Deontay Wilder versus Andy Ruiz, of course, he's a PBC guy. So you, you, you have to imagine that fight will be fairly easy to make. And depending on what happens with the Alexander Usek, Anthony Joshua situation, that might be a realistic fight as well. So we'll see. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below about Deontay Wilder versus any of these fighters and the fact that he's now calling these guys out when he wasn't calling them out when he was WBC champion. When he was WBC champion, he was trying to fight old men like Luis Ortiz, a guy who'd already knocked out, a guy who in between the first and the second fight had done absolutely nothing and he was trying to hype it up as if it was a super fight or something. To be honest, it was shocking that they put that on pay-per-view. He was coming up with all the excuses in the world why he didn't have to fight Dylan White, Usek, etc. But now, all change. Isn't that funny? When someone no longer has anything to lose, now they're willing to fight the people that they should have been fighting when they had that world title. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm out. If you'd like to access all my boxing content advert free and enjoy the convenience of listening via a podcast app with the option to download in high quality MP3, then consider joining me on Patreon. In addition to the aforementioned perks, you'll also gain access to exclusive weekly live stream Q&A sessions and hangouts, as well as uncensored, no holds barred uploads, which are too blue for YouTube. This includes my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Boxing Extra. There's no contract, there's no commitment, it's only £2.50 a month and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of hardcore boxing enthusiasts by signing up with me here on Patreon today.